An aerial view circles a marshy area where a copse of mangroves borders open water. Hundreds of white birds dot the water, and more fly above it. A wider angle shows sunlight glinting off the waterway. I've been monitoring wading birds for going on about 17 years now. And during my March survey flight this year, I saw thousands of white ibis setting up to nest. I've never seen that before. Text, Lori Oberhofer, wildlife biologist, Everglades National Park. From a helicopter, Lori gazes down at a river cutting through the vegetation. Birds line its shores. In fact, there were so many, I felt like sort of a deer in the headlights. I couldn't even count them. So I went back later and looked at the photos I'd taken and talked with some of our cooperators who also monitor wading birds in South Florida. And we decided that there were 10,000 ibis nesting at the Broad River Colony and at least 15,000 at the Cabbage Bay Colony. Ibis fill tree branches until it looks like the trees are flowering with white blossoms. We haven't seen that kind of nesting in Everglades National Park since the 1940s. Two wood storks perch atop group nests with a dozen other birds. They flap their wings, revealing the black plumage along each side. There were wood storks, rosier spoonbills, great egrets, snowy egrets, white ibis, um, little blue herons, and tricolored herons. A close-up shows two white ibis with long red-orange beaks and faces contrasting their smooth white feathers. They blink bright blue eyes, and one takes off. The reason we think that these big super colonies have settled in the park is that we've had really high water. That's due to better water management for the park, but also partially thanks to Mother Nature. We actually had a really wet, dry season. And then following that, we had tropical storm-like rainfall and Hurricane Irma. In a distant aerial view, sunlight gleams on meandering channels of open water. The birds are barely visible as white specks all along the water shore. In the tangled vegetation, storks perch together, and a bright pink roseate spoonbill swoops past. Another aerial view shows mangrove trees interspersed with marsh. Birds sit in each tree. So we had really high water, and more water produces more fish, which equals more bird food. We then had a really slow, gradual dry down going into the bird nesting season, and the dry down made the fish really easily available to the birds. A view from above shows tan mud flats dotted with small islands of trees. Darker brown patches mark channels of water crisscrossing the dried area, and wading birds stand in a cluster by their edge. A white ibis feeds its darker gray chick. It's a great spot where Shark River Slough and its freshwater meets the brackish water. So it creates this really unique environment with the sawgrass meeting the mangroves. And the freshwater from there goes out to Florida Bay and the Gulf of Mexico. An aerial shot reveals low fields of sawgrass meeting the raised, rounded clusters of mangroves. White birds dot the trees and fly over them. A pink roseate spoonbill faces the camera, showing off the flat, rounded end of its gray beak. A bright white great egret stands with its neck coiled back, giving it a hunched appearance. Darker gray juvenile white ibis perch on branches that sway in the wind. But it's a great spot for wading birds because they have two places where they can look for food. They can go into Shark River Slough and look for freshwater fish and crayfish. And they're also going out to the west coast and looking for crabs and brackish aquatic prey and fish that live out there. A bird flaps over the twisted roots and branches of the trees. Hidden in the tangle is a gnarled bird's nest made of woven sticks. An adult and a juvenile ibis stand side by side on a branch. So the young ibis are just fledging now. They're just learning how to fly. They're flapping around the trees, kind of clumsy. They're ready to go off on their own. An aerial view shows birds flying up out of the dense mangroves. Roseate spoonbills and wood storks perch in the same area of thick vegetation. Wading birds are really resilient. And the sign that they're giving us is that if we get the water right, they will return. A wood stork glides through the blue sky with its thin legs dangling out beneath it. It flaps its wide wings as it passes over other perched birds and finds a place to land in the treetops. As avian biologists working on Everglades restoration, this is one of the targets that we're looking for. We want to see these big white ibis nesting events like this, these super colonies.
White birds swirl above the mangroves and fill their branches, contrasting with the greenery. It's just really amazing to see. Back in the helicopter, Lori wears a white helmet and films the patchwork of water and vegetation with a handheld camera. A flock of wading birds fills a large area. Now on the ground, Lori climbs over mangrove roots and vegetation covered in bird guano. Text, featuring Lori Oberhofer, wildlife biologist, Everglades National Park. Blue sky peaks between the mangrove branches and birds fly past the thin screen of leaves. The Arrowhead logo of the National Park Service appears. Text, special thanks John T. Carey, HMC Helicopter Services pilot, Everglades National Park. Inside the helicopter cockpit, John flies low over the trees. Produced by Everglades National Park, South Florida Natural Resources Center. Filmed, directed, edited by Into Nature Films. IntoNatureFilms.org. Music, Elemental Glow by Elliot Middleton. Copyright 2018. The helicopter turns, swooping over the sawgrass and mangroves. White ibis watch from their place among the trees. Yeah.